Hey folks, welcome to Fireflies Follies. I hope that you enjoy the video today. If you do, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. So today I am working on rendering lard. Um, when you get a pig butchered or when you butcher a pig, you get the fat from it. Now, this is mostly belly fat um, or side fat. This is not the kidney fat. A lot of people want the kidney fat for pastries. That is not what this is. This is just the regular fat. You can get it from your butcher when you have one butchered, or you can cut it off yourself. And it comes in pieces. It comes in big, thick chunks. It comes in little, bitty, thin strips. Usually it's in a big bag. That's how this was. And I've been cutting it up. What you want to do is you want to cut it into like-sized pieces. So I've just been cutting this down. You want a nice sharp knife, and it helps if it's still semi-frozen. Not frozen, but, you know, sort of solid. This is the last of it, so it has thawed out completely. But you just want to cut it into small pieces so that it's all about the same size. And then I'm going to render it down. So I'm going to get this cut up. And then I will take you over to the stove and I will show you what I do to render it. And as you can see, I've got quite a bit already done. This is actually my second round. I did one round earlier. My pan only holds about this bucket full. So that's kind of what I'm judging by. So I'm going to go ahead and finish getting this cut up and I'll come back and talk to you once we're over at the stove. <music> Now that I have everything cut up, I'm going to clean up my mess on my cutting board. I'm going to take this over and I'm going to put it into my cast iron Dutch oven. I'm going to set it on medium low to get started. And I will bring you back throughout the process and kind of show you where I'm at with it. Alright, so this has been going for about an hour. And you can see it has definitely started to render. Now, you can do this in any heavy bottom pot that you choose. I actually am a bit of a purist when it comes to rendering and I really prefer to render in cast iron. So this is going to sit here and it is going to cook down. I'll come by every once in a while and give it a little bit of a stir. It doesn't need much because I do things like that. Um, but I'll come by and I'll give it a stir every once in a while. And this will continue to render. Now this is going to take a long time. We're we're talking hours, not minutes. Um, it's probably going to go for anywhere from four to eight hours, just depending. But I will bring you back from time to time and kind of show you where it's at and show you the progress that we've made. All right, so this has been cooking for about three hours and it's getting there. You can see that it has cooked way down from those big chunks, if I can get one out here, those big, big chunks that I had have rendered down, but they're still, still has a good ways to go. So I'm just going to leave it sitting here cooking, come back and stir it every once in a while, let it do its thing. So when I come back again, I'll bring you guys back. 
All right, so it is almost finished. You can still see it's bubbling a little bit. I'm gonna let it continue cooking until it's not bubbling anymore so that I know that all of the water has okay. cooked out, all of the moisture has cooked out, and it will stop bubbling. And once that happens, I will jar it up. So I'm gonna let this cook a little bit longer and then I will bring you back and show you how it all turns out. All right, my lard has rendered down and what I'm left with in the pan is lard and cracklings. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cracklings out. Now, some people love cracklings, some people don't love cracklings. I love them in bread, cornbread specifically but you can actually salt them and eat them. It's um, kind of like chicharrones, but a little oily. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop out as many of the cracklings as I can because they have done their job. And I am just going to put them onto a paper towel lined plate and set them to the side for now. Now, I like mine cooked down a little more than this, but to cook them down to the point that I want would take my lard too far. So I will put these back in once I'm done and render them down. One. So I will put these back in to the pan once I'm finished jarring up the lard and render them down to a more crispy version. But you could actually stop right here they are delicious to cook with, to season with. Um, if you get them really crispy and you want to just eat them, you just salt them and eat them. They're delicious, in my opinion. Again, not everyone agrees, but I love cracklings. Where I'm from, in the, well, in, back home, you can actually go into the supermarket and buy cracklings in the meat department. Up here, I've been to a lot of supermarkets and have yet to find anyone that sells cracklings. So I'm just going to set this to the side for now. Alright, so what I'm doing is I sanitized my jars. They're still nice and warm, um, but they are completely dry. I washed them in hot soapy water. I ran them through a hot rinse cycle in the dishwasher let them dry, and then I actually put them into a 250 degree oven to make sure they are completely dry. Moisture is your enemy when doing lard. So the way that I like to do mine is I like to strain it as I go. I have a few layers of cheesecloth covering the opening in my funnel, and then I have a fine sieve that I put in on top of it. Then I sit my jar in a paper towel lined plate because if any of you have been around very long, you know that I make a mess with everything that I do. And I have this sitting kind of back away from me because it is hot oil and hot oil burns badly. Trust me, I speak from experience. So now I am just going to slowly jar this up. I have my lids sitting in hot water. Um, I brought the water up to a boil, turned it off, and, and now they're just sitting. So I am just going to jar this up. And there are a few little bits in the bottom that I don't want to get into my jars of lard. That's the reason for the screen and the cheesecloth. And I'm gonna take these all the way to about a quarter inch head space. Now, I cannot express to you how important this part is. I have a towel laying here to drop my lid onto when I get my, when I get my hot lid out. But before I do that, I'm going to clean the rim. I'm actually gonna clean the rim a couple of times. I have just plain white vinegar. I keep it in a squeeze bottle. I have a 
piece of toweling. And I'm going to go around the top a couple of times. And then I'm going to get a second one and do it one more time. Just to be sure that I've gotten everything off the edge. I don't see anything. So I think we're good there. So now I'm going to grab a hot lid. I'm going to dry the hot lid. Because again, moisture is the enemy. I'm not canning this. You don't actually can lard. You seal lard and put it in your pantry. Alright. Hot lard, hot lid, hot jar, hot ring. Tighten it down. Set it to the side. Let it cool and it will be sealed. You can put it in your pantry to save. So I'm just going to repeat that process a few times. So once these have cooled down completely, they will be beautiful white type of lard. Um, this is not the kidney fat, so it's not the white lard that people want for pie pastries usually. Although when I make pastry with it, no one has ever mentioned that it tastes porky or pig-like. So, um, but this is not the kidney fat, which is what people typically want for doing pastries and pie crusts and things like that. Now, I will let this solidify. I will make sure that it's got a nice tight seal on it, nice tight ring seal on it. And I will put this in my pantry and it will last me for a very long time. It, when I buy lard in the store, which is, you know, becoming more and more expensive, it used to be that you could go buy a pound of lard, little green and white tub of lard, and it was like a buck. Now, the same little Green and white, one pound tub of lard is like six bucks. So any time that I can get fat and render it myself, that's exactly what I do. But if I go buy a tub of lard in the in the supermarket, it says right on it, do not refrigerate. Um, it's not vacuum sealed, it's not canned, and this does not get processed in my kitchen. This is the way that I have done it for years, and this has worked for me for all that time. So tomorrow I will bring you back and I will show you what it looks like once it has solidified because right now it's liquid and you can't tell how pretty it is other than you can see that it's sitting there. So I'm just going to put these off to the side. I'm going to keep filling jars and tomorrow I'll bring you back and I'll show you how it looks once it has solidified. So this is what I ended up, this is how it ended up, I've already put some of it away. Um, but this is how it ended up, and I wanted to show you the difference in what I had. So this would be what they consider to be the first run. Now, this is a nice white lard. It has very little flavor, and in my opinion, this lard is perfect for pie crust, pastries, biscuits, frying. You can use it for whatever you want. To get the cracklins, I cooked it down further. And you can see the difference in the two. This one has a slight pork hint to it. So I will use this for frying or if I need it for cornbread or something savory that I need lard for. And the reason that this is darker is because I cooked down those pieces of fat to get cracklins and I cooked them all the way down to crispy. 
So these are little crispy bits that are left over and they're called cracklings. And you can do a lot with them. My favorite way to use them and the way that I will use these is I will put them in cornbread. I love crackling cornbread. I grew up, it was one of the treats that, that we had in, after butchering time. So I'll use them in, in crackling cornbread, but some people just salt them and eat them. They have a slightly bacon flavor, fresh bacon. Um, not a smoked flavor, but a fresh bacon flavor. They're delicious that way. When they come out, I actually had a few. Um, just put some salt on them while they're still warm and eat them. They're delicious. But I will store these in the freezer and I'll open it up, scoop out about a half a cup and make crackling cornbread with it. But I did want you to see the difference between the first run and what it looks like after you've cooked the cracklings all the way down. Now, these sealed, they've, they've sealed completely, and they're gonna go into my pantry. They are perfectly content to be in the pantry for an extended period of time, as long as the seal holds, and I check everything in my pantry on a regular basis. So I will take the lids off of them and stick them out in the pantry probably tomorrow. I really hope that you enjoyed the video today. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. If you hit the notification bell, YouTube should notify you when I upload a new video based on your settings. Y'all, thank you so much for watching today. You have a great day.